uh, they want us to find the the slope of the secant line. Whoops, the slope of the secant line given that f of x equals this. So the formula that you should know by now, I'll do this in red here, is f of x equals f of x plus h for some h minus f of x all divided by h. And I can explain why that is true later, but basically all you're doing is you're taking, let's say our parabola is right here, you're taking some value, let's say this is x right here, and then you're going to add h, you're going to go h over, so this point right here would be x plus h, you're going to go up to the line, bad example, but that's okay, let's pretend like the h that I was going over, let me redo that a little bit, because that's going to be hard to see on this small graph. Let's say x was right here. And let's say h, this distance is h right here. So that point right there is x plus h. If you go up to the line right there, and go up to the line right there, and go over, this is f of x. This is f of x plus h. And we need to find what the slope of that tangent line is. There's going to be a line right there between those two points. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that point. But we want to find the slope of that tangent line. That's what this is. At, or, sorry, I said tangent line. The slope of the secant line. That's a secant line because it goes through two points. So the slope of that, if you remember, is the rise over the run. And rise over run, in this case, would be this minus this, which is right there, divided by this minus this, and what's x plus h minus x? The x is cancel and you just get h. That's why that formula works. All right, let me undo all that stuff, and let's now do the math for this particular problem. All right, so here's the algebra behind it. I'm going to take, this is function notation, so I'm going to take x plus h and plug it in everywhere I see x. So I'm going to do that carefully. I'll do this color-coded. So x plus h is right here. x plus h, whoops, I should have put squared up here. That's squared in red, so you can see that I'm just plugging it in. And x plus h goes here, minus f of x. I don't have anything to plug in there, because this is f of x. Whoops, sorry, I do have something to plug in. What is f of x? f of x is that whole thing. Oh. It's x squared minus 3x. That's what f of x is. Okay. Notice that I used parentheses there, and I'm being very careful. And yeah. this is all over h. So now let's simplify. x plus h squared, I'm going to do this shorthand. It's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And make sure when you distribute this negative, you, or the 3, you distribute the negative with it. So it's in minus 3x minus 3h. And now distribute this negative in here. It's negative x squared plus 3x all over h. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to look at what I can cancel out. I'll change color so you can see what I'm canceling out. That cancels with that. That cancels with that. And I get left with... I'm going to put this in um, standard form here, or put it... see if I can fit it down here still. This equals h squared plus 2xh plus, sorry, not plus, minus 3h. Um, did I forget anything? All over h. Okay, got it all? Yeah. Now I can factor out an h and cancel it with the bottom, or another way to think about it is just cancel an h out of everything on the top and the bottom, and your answer is just h plus 2x minus 3. All right, the next thing that undoubtedly they're going to ask you is something like this. What's the limit? What's the limit as h approaches 0? That's what they're going to ask you next. And so if we look back at this, if as h gets closer and closer to 0, the limit is just going to be 2x minus 3. So that's 2x minus 3. 
and that is really important right there because again let's look at the picture and let's think about what we were doing we had this point over here on our on our line we had this distance right here there was x and there was x plus h right and there's f of x and there's f of x plus h so the question is as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller so as the distance gets smaller and smaller and smaller what does the slope of that line get closer and closer and closer to so imagine taking lines I'm going to try to draw some various lines in here here's one tangent line going through like that the next tangent line is going to go through like that because it's because the X is getting smaller got it the next tangent line is going to go through like that the question is what is the what's the the limit as X gets smaller and smaller what's the secant line what's the slope of the secant line getting closer and closer and closer to and the answer is it's getting closer and closer and closer to this oh. line 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3 you're gonna learn soon is called the tangent line you've been hearing me accidentally say tangent line because that's what secant lines really are leading up to they're leading up the tangent line so that line right there that that line if you draw that in is called it's called the tangent line and that tangent line is the instantaneous rate of change at that point at that at that point that's how fast the slope or that's how fast the um, function is changing that's the rate of change at that instant of that particular function so the next question might be um, evaluate this at x equals 3 so at x equals 3 if I plug 3 in right here I'll get 6 minus 3 which is 3 and so that tells you the slope of that line right there that that line is increasing at a rate of 3 whatever dollars per hour or feet per second or whatever the units are that you're talking about and that's the point of the secant line and the tangent line